G'day, welcome to another episode of Shit Hotels of Australia. This time I'm in Bendigo, staying for one night at the Happy Wanderer Motel on uh, Napier Street. Uh, pretty busy traffic at the moment, train line around the back, so uh, not expecting it to be quiet, but at least it gives me space to park the boat just around the side and around there. So um, why don't we go inside and check out the room? Right, so this is room 7 at the Happy Wanderer No Children or Under 18s or Pets or whatever motel. Um, it's quite nicely set out. Um, and the pleasant thing about it is it's 32 degrees outside now. It was 37 a bit earlier, but walking in here, it's actually cool and we note that the, the aircon's not on, so that bodes well. So what have we got? We've got a two-seat sofa. We've got a single bed. We've got a queen size bed. We've got a little dining table and two chairs, TV, hanging space, mirror, microwave, fridge, aircon, which will come in handy. I can certainly see that. Uh, nice innovative little basin with a plug. And then bathroom, you have a toilet and a walk-in shower. I mean, we've got dispenser, shampoo and conditioner but at least that looks better than the one we had last night. So yeah, uh, it looks quite nice. Um, now just uh, do a little bit of housework and uh, then maybe go and check out uh, Bendigo, a bit of a way out of the city centre because I had to find somewhere to park the boat. Um, so I think it's about a kilometre's walk into where the Chinese Museum is. And um, it's pretty bloody hot out there, so, and it's 3.30 in the afternoon, but I think I'll go for a walk and check it out. Well, I was thinking about checking out the uh, Chinese Museum um, here in Bendigo, but uh, it's a half hour walk from the motel and to be honest it's 32 de degrees and I've driven for 8 hours, so I walked 20 minutes to here, the Bendigo Tramways Museum, but unfortunately Oh well, I guess uh, I'll have to come back to Bendigo another day. Okay, I think I'm going to stroll back to the hotel and get cool. And now for the Shit Hotels of Australia. Instant coffee test. This one expires August 2025. I've only found one. I've only found one that's out of date. Even the espresso was in date. Alright, but I won't be drinking it. And this is in Victoria, where there is a drive through cafe just five minutes down the road. Instant coffee. So, let's check out the TV here at the Happy Wanderer. Look what we've got. <laughs> I just love doing this. Just uh, going to play with the heads of other people who log in and see this. Well, I guess we don't have to check out the Wi-Fi, do we? It's working perfectly. Nice one, Happy Wanderer. So the rack rate for the Happy Wanderer is 120 bucks a night. And so when I booked it, and looking at the location and uh, looking at, um, well, yeah, looking at it from the front, um, $120 a night, that's what, $20 less than I paid last night at the Mittagong Motel. $30 a night that I'm less than I paid at the tiny little shoebox at the Stella uh, overlooking the beach in Yamba and $29 a night less than the uh, Boulevard Motel in Bundaberg 
This is the cheapest motel I've stayed in so far and I can say the room at least is the best and the classiest. Well done Happy Wanderer. I was getting Foldy Towers feels with the uh, no children uh, on the booking.com but uh, no, this is really good. I'm quite impressed with this. Let's see what sort of good night's sleep we get. Now that certainly is interesting because I don't have the shower running. <laughs> so, hmm, it's a bit of a mystery. And I'm not sure whether the um, lav mic will pick up the noise, but you can certainly still hear that water gurgling quite loudly from the uh, from the bedroom. So hopefully no, one, no one's doing that all night. It'll be a bit of a pain. Let's see if we can see any upkeep issues. Yeah, I can see some, but uh, not in this hotel. Because apart from a tiny little scratch and ding there, in the corner of that window, or not rust, rust, maybe rot. I can't see any upkeep issues at all. That's excellent. That's really good. And now for the shit hotels of Australia, fridge noise test. This one makes hardly any noise at all, but even if it did, it's only got two beers in it for tonight, and uh, no need to carry extra cold beers tomorrow. We're leaving the car and the boat, uh, and then uh, Hot footing it to Melbourne hopefully that's going to be a bit of a, a bit of a logistical uh, challenge I think um, but yeah anyway so if the noise if fridge does make a noise we can always turn it off and we'll see what sort of sleep we get it's been a bloody long day today well, may I ask what you were expecting to see out of a talky hotel bedroom window <laughs> Sydney Opera House perhaps the... Now, I must admit, when I saw on Booking.com, Happy Wanderer Motel Bendigo, children not permitted, over 18s only, I thought that we might have a few basil faulty moments with this one. So let's just have a look, shall we? So on the April the 5th, 2023, Brian stayed and he said it was not a great thrill. The arrangements for the bathroom and kitchen, no hanging space or cupboard space, basin in the kitchenette had to be used for washing hands after the toilet, shaving basin, washing used kitchen utensils. Well, I found that too, but um, the response from Basil is, enjoy your life worrying about little things and judging people harshly. You're in a brand new room, the same room that we get constant 10 out of 10 for. And um, on October the 19th, 2023, uh, Jeanne or Jean stayed there and said, uh, never again. I had uh, two drinks with dinner, and she's a regular stay there. She stayed there three times. I bought a bottle of wine to have in my room, good wine glasses, and I checked the fridge for tomorrow's coffee, and there wasn't any. I text and no message back. Okay, I understand that they don't walk tw work 24-7, but if I'm asked about a message with issues, I think I should get a reply. I rang and texted the next morning, and the reply was quite angry and abusive. I've since found out that the place has multiple issues. Okay, I won't be back, ever. What a shame. And Basil's response is, What on earth is that review about? We gave out fresh milk at check-in, and you didn't want any. Then at 10pm at night, after I'd gone to sleep, you sent messages insisting on fresh milk in the morning. Then in the morning, when I offer you fresh milk, you told me don't bother about it, you're going out for coffee. There was coffee in your room. Now get this. You were just unhappy because you got drunk and messaged me, messaged me multiple times throughout the night while I was asleep for milk. Then, because hungover, you didn't get the response that you wanted, you wrote this review. Shame on you! <laughs> this review score is a reflection on your inability to make good life decisions and arrive at a motel sober. And Jeanne had given a 3 out of 5 for this. <laughs> Never mind. Because um, on January the 9th, 2023, Solansky stayed there. I gave it a score of two, um, and uh, had, uh, his reply was not kids friendly. Property response, Jesus, where do I start with this one? You booked a room for two adults and brought a kid that you'd not booked for. We are a no child motel. That means only grown ups. 
You made the mistake by trying to be deceptive and sneak an extra child in. Your child had no problem with stalking my cat. <laughs> oh dear. I would like to note for people reading this review that you are not from Australian descent. And considering your husband was about to bash you in reception over not putting a child in the search engine, I'm... What does that mean? I'm assuming he wrote this review as well. <laughs> um, you're not from Australian respect, descent. Uh, don't mention the war, Basil. And then... On April the 18th, 2022, uh, Nick stayed. And he said, um, when we arrived late, there were two ladies who were inside our room that had made themselves. And the property response from Basil, you are old and unattractive. You had two super hot models in your bedroom. You could have just laughed it off, but instead you tried to blackmail us by writing a bad review and wanting your money back. <laughs> the only here not, the only thing here not acceptable is how grumpy you are over something so minor, especially when you scared those poor little girls from an innocent mistake. <laughs> they immediately went straight to their room. Oh, look, I had a good night's sleep at uh, the Happy Wanderer, but um, I'm hoping they don't see this video. Thanks, Basil. <laughs>
Well, the bed was really comfortable, um, and the bathroom, I love a walk-in shower. I love a big shower head like that. Uh, really nicely, nicely done. Uh, good shower pressure. Not a fan of the dispenser, um, so I'll take one off for that. But otherwise I would have given it, um, probably would have given it the top score. But apart from that then, therefore, bed and bath, four stars. Service. A text message yesterday as I was driving in, basically saying, the room's unlocked, the key will be in the room, when you leave, there's a box outside reception. Reception was closed, um, there's no sign of whether the room gets serviced daily, weekly, who, who knows. In fact, there's a complete absence of service, um, not even a number to call. Uh, I guess there is the text number that they sent um, to call if there's an emergency. Um, no sort of reference saying please call if it's an emergency, whatever hours the reception might be open or not. So, service, I'm going to have to give it one star. And now, the better than home bonus. Well, it was looking pretty horrible. Uh, that roadway outside Napier Street, four lanes running pretty loud. Train line around the back, which I later found was probably a shunting line. But you could hear trains in the distance. Um, <clears throat> but by the time I went to go to sleep, the, um, the traffic noise was quietened down and there was no noise at all from both rooms next door, which were occupied. <clears throat> Um, so I chanced it, slept without um, earplugs, and yeah, got a brilliant night's sleep. So they do, yes. Happy Wander Motel, you get the better than home bonus. But there's a caveat to that. I was, I had set my alarm to get up at 6am for the last part of this road trip. So if you were intending to sleep a bit longer than that, and it's now about 7, and the traffic noise has peaked up again, um, you probably wouldn't be able to get that sleep in. Um, but anyway, well done anyway. Um, so that's a total for the Happy Wanderer, no children, motel of uh, 24 out of 30. And I'm really, really pleasantly surprised because as I said, I chose this place purely because of the parking convenience for the boat and trailer. And it didn't look like it was going to be very good at all. Um, in fact, I am a little bit disappointed because I was hoping that this would really be a shit hotel that I could really pay out on, but it's not. It's actually a hidden gem. So, yeah, do yourself a favour if you get into Bendigo and you do have your car and you can drive to restaurants and things like that, do yourself a favour and check out the Happy Wanderer Motel. So, if you've enjoyed this video, please click like, please subscribe, leave any comments in the comments box below, and, uh, yeah, We'll see you again somewhere next time and it will be a short time and it could well be a shit hotel of Australia. Thanks for watching.